Welcome to this YouTube channel. In this video we are going to talk about the 10 ways how to stop people pleasing. So before starting this video like this video, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for future updates. According to Susan Newman, PhD, a New Jersey-based social psychologist and author of the book of number, 250 ways to say it and mean it and stop, people pleasing forever, people pleasers want everyone around them to be happy and will do whatever is asked of them to keep it that way. She said, they put someone else before themselves. Saying, yes, has become a routine for others, while for others, it's almost an addiction that makes them feel like they need to be wanted. This makes them feel valuable, and as if they're making a difference in someone else's life. People pleases crave approval from others. According to Linda Tillman, PhD, a clinical psychologist and assertiveness specialist in Atlanta, Georgia, the personal feeling of security and self-confidence is dependent on having the approval of others. People pleases, she claims, lack trust at their heart. They are concerned about how people would perceive them if they refuse. People don't want to be labeled as lazy, uncaring, arrogant, or fully egocentric, according to Newman. Whether it's friends, families, or co-workers, they're afraid of being disliked and cut from the party. Not only does it place a lot of pressure and stress on you, but it can also make you sick if you do too much, according to Newman. You'll probably get less sleep and become more nervous and depressed if you're overcommitted. You're depleting the energy capital as well. Worst case scenario, she said, you'll wake up exhausted because you're on such overload because you can't possibly do everything. Here are a few tips to help you stop being a people pleaser and say no once and for all. Number one, realize you have a choice. Remember that you still have the choice to say no, according to Newman. Number two, set your priorities. Knowing your goals and beliefs will help you avoid pandering to others. You'll know when it's appropriate to say no or yes. What are the most important things to me? You may wonder. Newman made a suggestion. Number three, stall. It's perfectly acceptable to suggest that you'll have to think about something when someone asks you for a favor. This allows you to consider whether or not you are able to assist them. Newman recommends asking yourself, how stressful will this be? Is this something I have time for? What am I willing to forego? I'm not sure how much pressure I'll be under. Am I going to be irritated by the person who has inquired? Asking yourself these questions is important, because, as Newman put it, you sometimes ask, what was I thinking? After you've said yes or helped out. I don't have the time or experience to assist you. Your automatic response may be no, if the individual wants an answer right away, according to Newman. And, as the saying goes, once you say yes, you're trapped. You leave yourself an opportunity to say yes later, if you know you're available by automatically saying no. You've also crossed it off your to-do or don't-do list, says the author. Number 4. Set a time limit. If you agree to help, Newman advises that you set a time limit. Let the individual know, for example, that I'm only available from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Number 5. Consider if you're being manipulated. People will clearly take advantage of you at times, so keep an eye out for manipulators and flatterers, according to Newman. How do you recognize them? People who flatter you would always say things like, oh you're so good at baking cakes, can you make a cake for my child's birthday? Or, I don't know how to put this bookcase together, but you're so handy, could you help me out? She said. Nobody does this better than you, she said, quoting a classic line. These individuals may also either coax you into doing something, or attempt to convince you what your availability or time frame is. Essentially, they make the decision for you before you even realize it. Number 6. Create a mantra. Create a mantra that you can repeat to yourself, to keep you from pleasing others. It might also be as easy as a large, no, blinking, when a friend who can always talk you into something approaches you. Number 7. Say no with conviction. It's always the toughest to say no to anyone for the first time, Newman said. You will be well on your way to getting off the yes treadmill. Also, keep in mind that you're declining for good reasons. She said, you get time for yourself and for the people you really want to support. Number 8. Make an empathic argument. Some people mistakenly believe that assertiveness entails stepping all over people, according to Tillman. Assertiveness is just about connection, she explained instead. So you tell the individual that you understand their situation, but that you are unable to assist them. People want to be heard and understood, says the author, and this is a polite way to assert yourself and say no. 
Number 9. Set clear boundaries and follow through. Newman explained that we all have physical or emotional limits, and that because of these limits, we must set boundaries. Ask yourself how far you're able to go, and don't go any further. Often, communicate your limits clearly. Say exactly what you're thinking and what you're looking for. You may, for example, have a friend who is just so emotionally, needy and pessimistic that she calls you all the time, with her problems, and needs you to listen, according to Newman. However, even just listening is a favor. And every time you hang out, you're sad and she's happier. Respect your limits, and tell her at some point, I can't support you, Newman advised. There are also subtle ways to respect your personal space. Start taking every other call and wean yourself off of her, you may say. You will do the same thing if anyone calls you during your busiest hours. I can't be available for you at 2.30, because I'm at work, let's set up a specific time to talk, you may say. Give a time that fits best for you when scheduling the meeting. Setting physical boundaries might include telling someone they can't just drop by whenever they want, or take your stuff without asking, she explained. Number 10. Don't make a long list of reasons. It's tempting to justify your refusal to say yes to others, so that they understand your logic. Begin little. Everything we learn how to do, we learn through a process, Tillman said, emphasizing the importance of taking small steps. Instead of barging into your boss's office and demanding a raise, she suggests talking with your immediate supervisor, first about how to plan for the conversation. Here are a few more examples, exercising successive approximations is a good idea. According to Tillman, successive approximation entails taking, one move in the direction you want to go, and rewarding yourself for making it that far. If the barking of your neighbor's dog is driving you nuts, she suggests confronting the individual by first saying, good morning, as you both leave the building. You might bring up how loud the area has been at another time. You should knock on his door and use, an empathic assertion if he doesn't get the hint. It can be beneficial to write down, how you get from A to Z, according to Tillman. She went on to say that this also helps you, develop the confidence to confront the individual. If it wasn't your fault, don't apologize. People pleasers, according to Tillman, are serial apologists. Pay attention to whether you're apologizing, and think about whether you're really at fault. She suggested that you consider whether you are to blame for the case. The majority of the time, the answer is no. It's important to remember that saying no has advantages. You as a person are entitled to your time, Newman said, and you need to relax and rejuvenate in order to be there for the people you want to help. Consider saying no as an opportunity to spend your time on things that are important to you. What do you think about this video? Do let us know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.